Do you have a problem with odors in your RV? Yeah, well, we may have figured it out. Last week, we took care of some body work. Before that, it was new faucet. And before that, it was a basement water leak. Chris has had an itch to take care of some things here in our RV home. I'm so glad he's handy. Mobile RV techs can get quite expensive. But there is one thing that's been a real nuisance, especially in a small space, and that's unwanted smells. I'm back. Oh my Lord, what is that smell? So that's what he's working on today. Well, that, and you know who has an appointment with the VET. We'll limit this discussion to our RV, a 2020 Grand Design 390 RK, and their possible sources. Starting at the back of the RV is the galley. It's uh, sinks, drains, and its separate holding tank and plumbing, which actually vents out the back of the RV, about 10 inches above the P-trap. Center forward is the bathroom, generally the most common offender with two sinks and a shower, and how should I say it? The uh, Lou? No, no, not the Louvre, but the Lou. Finally, there's the washer dryer all the way forward. For the forward sinks, shower, and washer, there is one 106 gallon gray water holding tank. For the Lou, there is one 53 gallon black tank directly below it. We had this problem about three and a half, maybe four years ago after we had been in the rig for a short time. After sniffing it out, we found that there are four different plumbing vents in this RV. One on the roof for the black tank, one out back for the galley sinks, two interior, one's a hep bow and the other's an inline uh, valve, and the offending area was from the washer compartment. Note, they, the washer and dryer were put in by our dealer when we bought the rig. Trying to be concise, the only way to address the problem was to remove the dryer. It's a stack system. I asked Chuck if he could give me a hand and we, mostly him, removed the dryer and I checked the HEPVO valve that was the vent and check valve for this part of the rig. It initially appeared that the washer's discharge hose was shoved into the drain without any securing hardware and I could see that the HEPVO valve was only about 10 inches or so below the drain opening. I grabbed the hose and began to pull to find that the dealership had shoved it completely through the membrane in the valve, essentially disabling it. Hence, the odor from the gray tank. I ran to the local parts supplier with the valve to get the exact replacement, came back and was done. It was an easy screw-in replacement screwed the discharge hose to a proper fixture and only five inches in the drain and odor was cured. Now not so fast. In the next few months we had the odor return. Now it wasn't from the galley or the laundry but this time from the bathroom. I had kind of, well Shelly told me that it was coming from under the sink, kind of what I thought. There just so happened to be an inline vent valve there. So I got online and had a multitude of choices, really expensive replacement valves and El Cheapo valves. Thinking the price here had to be better, I ordered the $28 Studer, that's uh, this version, and it seemed to do the trick, except every once in a while that Eau de Pepe Le Pew would uh, waft through the RV, slowly getting worse and eventually to where we are now. Well, that expensive valve, the Studer, didn't seem to do or to last too well. Maybe I'll try the El Cheapo version. Come back. Oh my lord, what is that smell? Hey, I've been trying to tell you for months it smells <laughs> like sewer gas in here, but you don't listen to me. <laughs> he, he doesn't even like it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'll get in there as quick as I can and take a look at it. You never listen to what I, I have to say. You said it was under the sink? Yep, my okay. side. All right, I'm going to go take a peek now. One caveat here, as the ambient temperatures rise, like now, 115 and 117 degrees, the tank's fluids stay pretty warm. Well, most RV toilets have a simple foot valve that if you push gently with your foot, will fill the toilet. And if you push more forcefully, then it will open the chute to the black tank. Yeah, a straight shot. Now remember, even with a vent, that tank is probably under a little bit of pressure from what is cooking inside. And the cool air in the RV is looking for somewhere lower to flow. If you let your black tank get a little too full and you flush, you will be met with a very unpleasant odor throughout the RV. Having that fart fan on <laughs> which you flush will tend to drain those gases out more. So turn it on after you flush. The fix for this is simple. Don't let the tank get too full. Flush and rinse it often. Then be sure to add treatment to help. Back to the valve. I ordered the $9 inline Ote valve and put some Teflon tape on it. Started unscrewing the inch and a half Studer valve took a deep breath and replaced it with the new Ote valve, then vented the area well. I went outside and did a thorough flush and rinse of the black tank, came back in and treated said tank. And now we waited. Success! So we loaded Grizz up and headed off to Scottsdale for his regular vet visit. Yeah, he knew something was up, skulking around before we suited him up to go. Poor little guy knows something is going to happen. He's just a, a little stressed. He actually loves Dr. S and the entire staff and this office. Dr. S used to teach our tactical medics and canine handlers how to treat seriously injured canines. We were even able to get approval from the local ambulance companies to transport the canines the same as an officer if needed in an emergency. Today are shots, a checkup, and nails. Once we got there, he was so happy to make friends that he never even noticed the procedures. We're on the way to the VET. It's a four-letter word to a dog. And he's nervous. Hello, oh, Grizzy. This is our most recent acquisition. It is an air tag. And they make uh, these little plastic things right here that um, are specifically made to go for like a dog's collar. So we can keep tabs on our furry little friend wherever he may be. And it's especially good for a service animal if for some reason Grizz were to get separated from me for some reason. Uh, he can be easily located uh, with our phones. For those of you that don't know, this is Grizz's car seat. Uh, we've had one with most of our dogs. It's a snoozer car seat. We'll put a web uh, link in the video for you. What it does is, with the truck, it connects underneath the console but in the back here, it connects down where the seat belt bolting is. So it's basically bolted in like a seat belt. And then he has a harness on, and this harness has a connection, which is seat belt material or type material that goes down through here which is what's connected through here so the car seat won't go anywhere and since he's connected to that which is bolted to the floor he's not going anywhere so he's actually probably safer than we are um, in his seat since he's so small we also keep his water bottle a toy his little duck and his service dog vest and you can adjust the length on this. Uh, we make sure to keep it kind of short, so the most he can do is kind of hang out the side. Um, 
and he also likes to sit up and watch the traffic outside and see what's going on outside but uh, we love this snoozer car seat it's fabulous um, like I said we've had one for him um, before when we first started out we had their large one when we had our two uh, miniature dachshunds um, and they would sit in the back seat um, it was bolted down in the back seat and then they could look out their rear windows for you know whatever to look around um, and they also had they basically had a 360 degree view of everything that was going on and they loved the car seat and when that car seat wore out we had it in our home and they would at, we put it on the floor and they started sitting in it on their own um, because we got a new one that we put in the vehicle when the other one got worn out so if you were to ever get into an accident uh, the airbag would probably kill your animal unfortunately and that's not something we want for our animals um, so for us this is our best way of traveling with both our pets and our service animal I think yeah, that was a really good job. You should probably get hired by Snoozer to advertise for <laughs> Yeah, Snoozer. I do love Snoozer products. Pretty boy. Yes, you are. Yes, we did go back to the sweet smell of home after a busy day. Hope we can see you guys again next week. Please, travel safe.